And now, stand by for adventure. Three, two, one. In the exciting story of... Interplanetary investigator Colonel Bleak and his space deputies Squeak and Scratch floated to a stop just above the surface of the moon. They were searching for some trace of the terrible Dr. Destructo among the thousands of crater marks that dotted the strange landscape. To Bleak it appeared that these craters might have been caused by thousands of meteors crashing down at terrific speed. But many scientists believe the strange markings are the scars of a tremendous bubbling action caused when hot internal gases escaped to the outer surface back when the moon was soft and pliable. Scratch, however, imagined the many craters had been left long ago by violent volcanic eruptions, similar to those the planet Earth had experienced from time to time. Then, something below caught their attention. Glistening in the sun at the very top of Mount Leibniz, the moon's highest visible peak, stood a strange tower. It closely resembled the man-made structure called the Eiffel Tower, which is a familiar landmark on Earth, in the city of Paris. Diving down for a closer look, Bleep and his friends found a huge reflecting mirror with a powerful lens attached to the top of the tower. This had been the moon power device used by Dr. Destructo not long ago to guide the runaway rocket straight down toward Zero Zero Island. While Bleep and Squeak searched for clues, Scratch peered through the powerful lens for a telescopic view of the Earth beyond. But as he looked, he froze with horror. For there, with one foot on South America and the other on South Africa, stood a tremendous black giant. Actually, it was only a highly magnified shadow of the caveman himself projected nearly a quarter of a million miles through space by the light of the moon. But the sight was so terrifying, the frightened Scratch fell over backwards and tumbled down to almost certain death on the rocks below. Squeak looked up just in time to see his helpless companion falling straight down upon the puppet himself. Squeak couldn't move or even call for help. He could only cover his eyes and wait for the bone-splintering crash. He waited for the end, and waited, and waited, but nothing happened. Then, Squeak opened his eyes just as Scratch gently floated into his arms. For you see, the gravity pull of the moon is only one-sixth as great as Earth. So, Scratch almost floated down that great distance like a feather to land unharmed in the arms of little Squeak. Suddenly, Bleak urgently signaled his companions. He had found still another clue. At the base of the tower was a scrap of notebook paper covered with the hasty scrawls of Dr. Destructo's own hand. To the others, it was only a jumble of strange symbols. But to Bleep, this was a flight plan. Destructo's own flight plan. And it told the Colonel exactly where this master culprit had gone. It would take courage to follow Destructo now. For Bleep knew this place, knew it too well, and he was sure that fantastic terrors would be waiting out there.